Thank you, Mr. Thayer, and thank you, General. Um, I, I want to dig into a piece of your testimony just to make sure we're all kind of on the page you're on. You talk about we all knew this fighting season would be tough. Uh, talk about why why this fighting season, you know, was particularly challenging. So we knew this was going to be tough again because this was really the first year that the Afghans were going to be totally on their own. Um, and so the Taliban would want to test that early. So absolutely. The Taliban knew that uh, as well. And they also knew if there was some, going to be some sort of reconciliation in the end, they wanted to operate from a position of strength. To get a position of strength, they got to fight. They got to go out and cause disruption with the Afghan security forces. So um, I think everybody knew this was going to be very, the Afghans certainly knew this was going to be very tough. They tried to get out in front of this by conducting a multi-core operation early on in the February time frame. So they actually started uh, the fighting season, the Afghan security forces did, as opposed to waiting to the Taliban brought it on. You know, there, there's usually about an April to October fighting season that people talk about. You know, and this year, as I said, there really was no lull, and that it was a continuous fight. And the Afghans, a lot of times, take the winter time frame to regroup, um, to do additional training. They did not have that opportunity. This they would love not only to be militarily successful in this in this fighting season, this first, but they would love to destabilize the civilian government if, if they could, if at all possible. The Taliban, yes, sir. Yeah. A absolutely. T talk a little bit about the Taliban post Mullah Omar. The, we talked a bit about this in my office yesterday, sort of internal divisions and factions. We've also heard um, claimed ISIL affiliations in Afghanistan, but a lot of the reports have suggested that may be Talibanis who are not happy with their leadership, and so they're claiming an affiliation with ISIL. Who, who is the Taliban today? Talk about that a bit. Sure, thanks. Um, so again, the Taliban uh, under Mullah Omar had a spiritual leader. He'd been there for years and years, um, whether they, you know, and they did not see him for many years. And, and in fact, for the last two and a half years, there's been a big lie out there that he'd been passing on guidance. And, and uh, many of the Taliban, I believe now, feel um, feel that they they trusted somebody that wasn't there. And so um, they're disenfranchised. They want to do something about it. And so they're fighting back against Mansoor because they knew Mansoor was the guy that had something to do with this. So there are fractures within the Taliban. Mansoor, uh, Yaqub, Manan, uh, many other ones in there, uh, Dadullah. And they're trying to take control of a piece of it. The, the Taliban are very decentralized. And so they do operations that are very decentralized. Uh, but Mansoor is trying to get a, 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 a coalescent group there. He, he has named, I think, as uh, Senator McCain talked about early on in Senator Reid, that he has named Siraj Khani as one of his deputies. Uh, he has, he has uh, uh, Zawahiri from AQ has come out and said, I pledge allegiance to the Taliban as well. So there seems to be some steam over the Omar piece to try to coalesce and get a group. Uh, but, but they have their own issues with, with funding, with being able to work together, uh, leadership issues. Up in the, mostly in Nangarhar, um, in, in the east, as we've seen a rise of Daesh or ISIL K, KP. It's been reported in a lot of different provinces, Saripul, um, Helmand, but Nangarhar is where ISIS or uh, the Daesh have predominantly been. And that's where they want to set up and use Jalalabad as their capital, their capital, of course, on province. And they want to try to recruit and they want to expand. The issue right now is that the Taliban and Daesh continue to fight each other. And so they're going at it in, in, inside of there. A lot of the Daesh, as we see, continue to be uh, disenfranchised Taliban that maybe see Daesh as a way to gain uh, more media, more resources. So they kind of change T-shirts, raise a different flag. You see a lot of uh, TTP that are Pakistani Taliban that have uh, gone over to the Daesh side as, as well. So we continue to look at that. When I was here in February, I think I called it the nascent. Uh, the term I would use today would be operationally emergent, and as they continue to uh, try to build upon their capacity. President Ghani looks at that. I look at it every day as we move forward. Let me ask you about one more uh, topic. You were, prior to this assignment, you were vice chief of the staff of, vice chief of staff of the Army, and one of your responsibilities was readiness. Uh, we're having an intense budgetary discussion here. How? how Many of our military strategies around the globe are limited because of readiness deficits in the current budget environment. Sir, so all, all of the forces that I get in Af Afghanistan have the requisite training, and they've gone through all of that. So I have not suffered that uh, in Afghanistan. I do know that uh, with all the services, they continue to have issues as we look toward um, the, the sequestration. And I think over time, uh, they've been able to balance that based on priorities, provide Afghanistan the requisite uh, 
uh, forces with the right right training. Uh, but as the budget uh, will continue to have issues, uh, hopefully that will not impact Afghanistan, but it certainly could as we move forward, sir. General, I appreciate your testimony as much as I agree with members of the committee that our strategy in Afghanistan should be conditions-based, not calendar-based. I hope we'll have a budget that is conditions-based, not calendar-based to a decision that was made in August of 2011. We should be making budgetary decisions based upon the needs of today. And with that, Mr. Chair, thank you.